Your dreams are bigger, bolder, and more badass than the life you're living now. But something just keeps getting in the way. Join certified coach and former therapist Diane Wingert for the Driven Woman podcast. She'll show you how to get rid of whatever is holding you back so you can stop spinning your wheels and up-level your life. Get ready to hop in and buckle up. This is the Driven Woman podcast, and we're heading for the fast lane. Hey, if you're a bold, brilliant, badass woman who has great big goals, works her ass off chasing them, but for one reason or another, finds herself at the end of the day with a to-do list that's even longer than it was in the morning, this episode is for you. You might not like it, but hear me out before you decide. Are you ready? Okay, here it is. I get up at 4.40 a.m. every damn day, including weekends and holidays. Now, I'm not a soldier, a dairy farmer, or a stockbroker. I don't have to get up this early because of my job or because it feels good. I can assure you it does not feel good. It's also not because I don't enjoy sleeping. I most certainly do. Or because my husband snores. He does, and many nights so do I. I actually do it by choice because I finally stopped resisting it. And once I stopped thinking it was unnecessary or even some weird form of self abuse, I decided to give it a try. And you know what? I discovered that it works for me and for my business. Let me give you the backstory. It started a few years ago when my very favorite instructor at my very favorite gym while I was still living in Los Angeles changed his schedule. And, as you might expect, my very favorite class now was at 5.30 in the morning. If I was going to make that class, which meant drinking my coffee, feeding my dogs, taking them out to pee, changing into my workout clothes, driving to the gym, greeting the front staff, and so forth, and getting the desired place in the room, 4.40 was just what it's going to take. And as motivated as I was to make it to the best spinning class in town, in my opinion, that on its own probably wouldn't have been enough to stick with it. Now listen, I do love feeling like a rock star having my workout already behind me when it's still dark outside. But as great as that feels, it's really a consequence of my choice, not the reason I make it. You see, I get up at 440 because I want to jump start on the day. And because I'm simply more motivated, productive, and efficient now that it's become my routine. It definitely helps that I've always been more or less a morning person. Most days, I would normally wake up with a fair amount of energy and enthusiasm and more or less ready to take on the day at around 6 or 6.30. But as the hours would pass, those resources would be continuously depleted. Well, morning person or not, 4.40 just isn't going to happen naturally, not without commitment and not without training. There's a big difference between 440 and 630. And if you're thinking 440 is ridiculous and there's no reason why any sane purpose would have their eyes open, much less be trying to do anything at that time, let me tell you some more. Okay, I first started hauling myself out of bed for the sake of vanity, let's be honest. But I had to start looking for other reasons to support the choice. You know, if you've been listening to this podcast for more than an episode or two, you know I love talking about the brain and all the ways it works that most people don't know. But if they did, life would be easier. Well, once you make a decision to do something, or even while you're in the process of trying to make that decision, you're going to look for evidence why it's the right thing, why it's the best of all possible choices. It's the only way you can tone down the second guessing going on in your head every time that early alarm goes off. I was already listening to interview-style podcasts for small business owners, and I began to hear one successful entrepreneur after another talking about their morning routines and claiming that it was the secret of their success. Not talent, not hard work, not connections, not a brilliant idea, but getting up early really early and doing so every day, not just during the week. Well, after I heard that a few times, I realized that my quest for a better body and a better business was just enough to prompt me to give it a go. 
Now, like most entrepreneurs, I would typically start my day determined to make it productive, but every email, every social media comment started to feel like an interruption. If I was lucky enough to be in the zone, simply answering a question or responding to a request siphoned off yet another chunk of my most limited resource, my attention. The one thing that matters more than anything else, because where my attention goes, my energy flows. If it happens to be flowing to Facebook or Gmail or YouTube, I have that much less available to write the next blog post, record the next podcast episode, or even to serve my clients. Now listen, I am a mindset and productivity coach for female entrepreneurs, so believe me when I tell you, I know every trick in the book for hacking my energy. But I am in a constant battle for my attention, a battle that can feel quite impossible to win. Getting up at 440 might sound painful, and I got to admit it's a hard sell. But it's nothing compared to letting yourself down again and again and again by not getting the really important stuff done. Probably like you, I've always been a go-getter. And I've always tried to squeeze every last drop of juice out of the orange of life every day. But it wasn't until my kids were grown and flown that I realized I was putting off the really meaningful stuff, telling myself, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll get to it later. Unfortunately, procrastination and excuse making had become the norm. And now it was time to face the habit and deal with it. I didn't have the kids around anymore as an excuse. I had been reading books and listening to podcasts from all the best productivity experts. I knew that working out would give me more energy and improve my focus. I learned that working out in the morning would maximize the benefits as well as helping me kickstart my day. But once I swapped the thought, it should be getting easier by now. It's hard to get up early and I can do hard things. It actually got easier by accepting the feeling that it was hard and I really didn't want to do it, instead of trying to change it or wish it away, I could just remind myself of my commitment and the fact that this is what I chose. Getting up early to exercise first thing in the morning transformed from a have to into a choose to. Now, this may sound like a really minor thing, but that mindset shift empowered me to just do it instead of struggling and frankly, feeling sorry for myself. As that thought, the one, I can do hard things, began to become my default, other empowering thoughts began to show up in my mind spontaneously. I began to leverage my mornings by switching to bulletproof coffee and creating a real morning routine. My goals began to shift from getting more done to getting the right things done. I started setting better boundaries and embraced the practice of creating before consuming, meaning I now focus on producing my own content before I read or listen to others. Now listen, I'm not going to blow smoke up your skirt. Getting up early is not a magic pill. You've got to have a plan. You've got to have structure and some routine in order to take advantage of it. Getting up at 4.40 a.m. or 4.45 or 5 or 5.30 or whatever you choose isn't going to do anything for you unless you protect and invest those extra hours. If you're in the habit of working during the evening and on weekends, contaminating your so-called quality time with friends and family with texts and emails from clients, this strategy is totally worth a try. Just imagine you wake up early get your body, mind, and brain moving, and log in at least two hours of focus time after the gym for your most important projects. This can happen before the onslaught of emails, phone calls, DMs, texts, and Slack messages completely hijack your day. You can stake a claim on your morning, protect your attention and your focus by turning off the notifications. Better yet, Turn the damn phone off altogether. There are apps that limit your Wi-Fi use to only those apps you designate ahead of time so that you don't drift or wander into rabbit hole territory. And if you need them, get them and use them. Now listen, you probably don't consider yourself a morning person. Most of my clients didn't either. You tried to get up early in the past and it was miserable. 
You may be worried about an energy crash in the afternoon if you get up early. You don't want to have to go to bed early and feel like a toddler. You may think you need to stay up and keep your partner company while they watch their favorite shows until midnight. Blah, blah, blah. You're right. You don't need to get up early. And I can't make you. In fact, I'm not even trying to sell you on the idea. Really, I'm not. My goal is simply to share what I do and how it benefits me. You're a grown-ass woman. You can make up your own mind. I'm not your mama after all. I just want you to know it's an option. That's all. I know plenty of people who stay up all night to get their most important work done because they are completely convinced that they are thriving on four hours of sleep. It's not my jam, but it's an option. Life is full of options if you look around. And the cool part is they are all available to you. You can get up early. You can stay up late. You can exercise or not. Drink coffee or not. Be productive or not. Reach your goals or not. But whatever you choose, please actually choose it. Don't just allow your precious human life to be squandered by habits you didn't even choose. Decide who you are. Decide what you choose to accomplish. It really is up to you. And if you happen to be in Portland at 5.30 a.m. at my new favorite gym now that I live here, maybe I'll see you in spin class. I'll be in the front row. Oh, that's another one of my habits, being in the front. I figure as long as you're going to get up at the crack of dawn, You might as well go all in while you're at it. So if you've had enough of your perfectionism holding you back, or how about your procrastination, people-pleasing, distractibility, imposter complex, or all of the above, I've got you. And for the first time ever, in addition to my individual coaching program, I'm going to be offering group coaching online this fall. To get all the details, you got to get on the waiting list. There's a link in the show notes and also on my website. Want to hear from someone who's actually worked with me? Here's my client, Rachel. I didn't have you helping me along the way to understand a lot of this stuff. The meds would have been a waste for me, a complete and total waste. I would have had a little bit more energy maybe, but still the habits, whatever. There's no magic pill. It's always going to be something I'm going to have to work on. And I am understanding that and being okay with that and just kind of working through that and thinking and being intentional and stopping myself and doing all of the things for the first time in my life. I'm going to tell you right now, the meds have allowed me to slow stuff down enough that I've never been this effective at anything cognitive ever in my life. But I've also never had it explained to me by somebody who understands what's going on in my head either. You've been listening to the Driven Woman Podcast with Diane Wingert. Want more straight talk and strategy each week that will take you from spinning to winning? Don't forget to hit subscribe in your podcast player so you won't miss a single episode. Then head on over to the Driven Woman free and private Facebook group community. See you there.